Spaghetti alle olio peperoncino is one of the simplest and most delicious dishes you can make, but being simple doesn't mean it's easy. In this video, I'll show you the authentic Italian way of making it. Because it's a dish with few ingredients, I recommend that you buy a better quality spaghetti, which is a little more expensive, but not much, especially when you think about how much money we spend on st every month. This 500 gram pack cost me about $3. Nowadays that's barely enough for a Starbucks coffee. Well this half a kilo pack feeds about 4 people who eat a lot. I chose and recommend a durum wheat spaghetti that was bronze cut. But what does that mean? If you look carefully, this spaghetti has a rough texture. And this is the result of the pasta being expelled from machines that have bronze cutters. Being rough means that the pasta has a better ability to grip the condiment or sauce. A seldom used ingredient in this dish is red pepper, but it is part of the original version which is called aglio olio peperoncino, that is to say garlic, olive oil and red pepper. If you don't have a fresh one, you can use red chili flakes instead. And speaking of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. As this is a very quick pasta dish, the first step is to put water in the pan and let it boil. While the water boils, I'll prepare the other ingredients, in this case the garlic and the red pepper. You may already know this, but if you punch the garlic, the husk separates more easily. With the peeled garlic, I'm going to slice it as thinly as possible, as this is the most recommended way for this dish, as the garlic's flavor changes a lot when you crush it or mince it. Many Italians believe that the German garlic, which is the sprout that is sometimes green, causes indigestion and should be removed. I looked for some scientific work that proves this idea, but I didn't find anything. Nevertheless, I do remove it if I'm going to use the garlic raw. And now I'll cut the pepper. I'll leave the seeds in, but you can take them out. Now for the cooking. In a cold pan, I add olive oil, then the sliced garlic and peppers. Then I turn the heat on low, stir a little, and as soon as the garlic starts to fry, I turn off the heat, as the garlic shouldn't go brown, and cover the pan. The water is boiling, so I'll add enough salt, and then the spaghetti. With the help of tongs, I accommodate the pasta inside the pan. As you can see, there is no reason to break the spaghetti at all. I don't usually cook pasta with a lot of water, as I think it's unnecessary. When the pasta is halfway through cooking, I turn on the heat again in the pan with the garlic. And then I put a little's worth of pasta water to form a kind of sauce. It's better if the pan is cold like this, because we don't want the risk of burning or browning the garlic. We're going to finish cooking the pasta right here. When you bite into a spaghetto, which is the singular form of spaghetti, and it has a white dot in the center that takes about half of it, that means it's time to transfer the pasta directly to the pan where the garlic is. It doesn't matter that a little water comes with it, that's even better. Then, we stir until the mixture of water and oil emulsifies. That is to say, that there is neither one nor the other left at the bottom of the pan. The spaghetti should be like this. In my case, it's ready, but if it's not cooked to your liking, Add more pasta water until you reach the doneness you prefer. And now the best time has come, which is the time to serve and eat. You may be asking yourself, but where is the grated cheese? Where is the parsley to garnish? Well, they don't belong here. Because this is a dish that is considered part of the poor Italian cuisine, created in times of difficulty, it's not traditional to garnish the dish with anything, let alone add grated cheese. Of course you can put it in your plate if you want, but it's not the correct way of eating this pasta. And to be honest, neither cheese nor parsley are needed, as we already have a lot of flavor from the olive oil, as well as the garlic and pepper. If you're confused, wondering how I could have used olive oil, which is more expensive, in a dish considered to be poor people's food, I'll explain. It was and still is very common for many families in Italy to have their own olive trees, which they used to make their own olive oil, so it didn't cost them anything. The advent of cheap vegetable oils is something quite recent. Before that, in the Mediterranean, people cooked with olive oil and animal fats. I didn't add any salt to the garlic mixture because there was already enough salt in the cooking water. As you can see, my plate is quite tight, as the spaghetti wasn't swimming in oil. One of the biggest mistakes most people make when making this dish is putting too much olive oil, and this makes it very heavy on the stomach. I really appreciated your company during this lunch. I hope you enjoyed it too. But anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see each other in the next video. Bye.